This video is jumping to the full size picture here because the thing we're looking at is very, very tiny. It's like too tiny. I'll put it down here. You can see how tiny it is. So I've scaled it up a bit so we can see. Let's zoom in. So this was sold slightly deceptively on AliExpress as a solar lithium charge controller which uh, has MPPT. Now, MPPT stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking and is normally found in bigger solar systems. It's a, a way of uh, adjusting to the temperature and intensity of the sunshine, and it just finds a sweet spot for the solar panel for getting the maximum uh, power out of it, voltage to current ratio to actually charge batteries efficiently. This does not have that. Uh, but it doesn't matter. What really matters is that this chip is optimized for use with solar panels for charging a lithium cell or a parallel bank of lithium cells. It has a very similar pinout of this chip, CN3163, to a TP4056, but the TP4056 has one slight pin difference and also... Uh, it's not necessarily optimized. I'm not really sure what happens if you stick a solar panel into one of these. I've never really given that much thought. I just thought it would just let as much current through whatever voltage it was as long as it was above the battery. But this one, as soon as it uh, reaches, uh, if the sun goes down and the output from the solar panel goes close to the battery voltage, it will just cut out and go into a super low current mode, which is possibly the main advantage. So what do we have? We have the input here from the solar panel. Uh, worth mentioning, uh, most of the solar panels that you find for charging lithium cells are 6 volt. They've got 12 se silicon sections. I think that's partly because they're designed to be used with a diode. This doesn't need a diode. It also has a maximum input voltage rating in the pins of 6 volts. You're going to have to use something like a 10 silicon section solar panel that puts out, say, 5 volts, uh, just to avoid going too high. But the solar panel comes in here and it feeds the voltage input pin. It also feeds that resistor there, as I'll show you in the schematic for the two LEDs, uh, charging and charged. Uh, the output goes to the lithium cell here with its own decoupling capacitor. And the only other component of significance is this uh, 1.2K resistor, which is used to program the charge, the maximum charge current. The real charge current will depend on the amount of sunshine hitting the solar panel. But this caps the maximum charge current, in this case, to one amp. If we look at the back of the circuit board, you can see all these plated through holes in this side. On the back of it, we have a large sort of heat sink ground plane is what it's been used for. There is a pad on the back of that chip that just couples onto that for thermal dissipation. Other than that, we've just got the track leading to resistor, the track leading to LEDs, but this special track here, which is the important bit, uh, whereas the TP4056 uses um, pin 8 as chip enable, this one is a feedback pin, and that's what makes it quite different. It means it's not a drop-in replacement for a TP4056. Uh, but that track there, you don't want it to break because that loses control over the upper voltage of the cell if that happens. Now, let me show you the schematic provided by the manufacturer with the variation to let you adjust the battery voltage. I'll zoom out a little tiny bit here. So here's the incoming supply from the solar panel. There's the resistor feeding the LEDs. Uh, there's the chip. There's the resistor that sets the current. And there is the output to the battery. And this is the difference here, the feedback. Uh, it is normally connected directly to the battery. And it, if, if it is, then that gives a 4.2 volt of our charge threshold that it will cut off. If you add a resistor in, it effectively adds it in series with the internal resistor and uh, skews the voltage settings slightly and it lets you increase the voltage to say 4.3 volts or something like that, but not decrease it. And that's the annoying bit because if you see the actual block diagram, the chip, which I'll show you in a moment, it would have been straightforward to actually do that, I think. And they've kind of destroyed a huge part of the market for themselves. Anyway, this resistor down here, just like the TP4056, it's got a 1.2 volt roughly reference voltage, 1.2K, that means it'll pass 1 milliamp, multiply by 1,000, that's the current it charges at. But it also uses uh, this value multiplied by 100, that's 100 milliamps, to initially trickle charge the cell if it's gone too low uh, and also to detect the end of uh, charge state when the current drops below that uh, tenth of the charge current threshold. Now let me show you the block diagram and what I think is a terrible flaw. 
uh, that could have just basically made it so much more useful. So here is the block diagram in general, but we are only actually really interested in what's up here. So I shall zoom in on what's up here. I'll maybe even zoom in just a little bit more because uh, we need to see what's going on here, particularly this annoying voltage mod uh, divider here. So here is the bit they call the adaptive cell. I'm not really sure what that means. I think it's strictly detecting the current that's available and uh, passing it straight through to the battery, uh, capping it with that programming resistor. And that's it. The, I don't think it's doing much else other than detecting when the voltage drops too low and it shuts the system into standby mode. Here's a feedback pin. And as standard here, the output to the battery goes out here. There's the lithium cell and there is the zero volt rail. And the feedback pin normally just goes straight onto that and it monitors it. And it's set with this potential divider to turn off the charging when it reaches 4.2 volts. If you add a resistor in to that line externally, it adds it in series with this one and skews the voltage divider so you can say choose 4.3 volts if you've got a, one of those higher voltage cells. But to me, that's just not a great idea because what they could have done is they could have uh, linked that straight to the output, that end of the voltage divider, and they could have brought the tap out to a feedback pin. And with doing that, they could then have added a resistor down here that could have tuned it to actually increase the voltage to the cell, say for instance, for those high volt, higher voltage cells. But if they'd put the resistor here, it would theoretically have uh, skewed it in the opposite direction. And you could have said, say, let's charge it to 3.9 volts for long terms of topping up storage applications to prolong the life of the cell. Or you could have done it with a lithium iron phosphate, life PO4, by changing it to match its termination voltage. Or what about the sodium cells that are coming out? They could have just changed one resistor and it would have just matched it to that sodium cell. So that seems a bit of a shame. Maybe they'll see this video and they'll consider it and bring out a new version. But other than that, it's quite an interesting chip. It's nice that it's been optimised for solar panel charging. Um, it's a nice sensible layout on the circuit board. And just uh, quite a handy little module in general. I shall be doing some tests on this. But there we have it. A single board, simple, uh, solar powered lithium charging solution. It's quite a neat little thing.